Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA and usually you see me painting furniture but today's craft was something that I was thinking about for a long time. Even though it's still like a hundred degrees here in Richmond, Virginia, I am dreaming about sweater weather. So let's do a little fall craft and create a fun little Halloween book. Starting off with bonding boss in gray. Two even coats and waiting 24 hours before you paint will allow you to paint on this slick and shiny surface. Then we are going to get crafty with some clay. Can you tell yet what I am creating? Do you kind of see a little theme going on here? Well, if you are a fan of fall Halloween movies, you might know a little movie called Hocus Pocus. And in that movie is a really cool book that they call the Book of Shadows. And it kind of looks like this. So my inspo for the movie is to create this little book and make my own little Book of Shadows Halloween box. I used just some regular clay that hardens up on its own air dry clay that I purchased at Hobby Lobby, creating the eye and the snakes. And then I found this little scrap piece of Would You Bend that I had hiding out. Would you bend moldings can be heated up, you unroll them, you add your wood glue, and then they harden into the shape that you apply them to. So I added it to the spine of this book. I decided to add some little scars and stitches along the part of the book that is supposed to look like skin. I mean, that's creepy, but that's what it's supposed to look like. So I am adding those along the top part of this clay here, and when it dries, I'm going to paint right over top of it. After my air dry clay has dried for a day or so, I came back in with some paint. So the plan is to make it look dark and leathery. After I sanded the edges of the Would You Bend molding, I came in and added one even coat of caviar, which is a really nice black from the Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint line. You can still see the texture that's actually on the book that was there to begin with. It didn't disappear when I painted over with the bonding boss. So adding a little bit of chocolate in and some water to kind of keep it movable, I'm going to create a leather-like look on this piece. A little bit of burlap in the centers, which is that lighter color that you're seeing, and then adding, of course, some gold gilding. For the gold gilding, I came in with Moonshine Metallics in Gold Digger to kind of accent all of the little details. Also, a little FYI, the snakes wouldn't stick well, so I actually waited until they were dry and then I just used my hot glue gun to attach them to the book again. So a drying brush, the metallic over the edges, is really gonna hit all of the raised details that's on this piece and really give it some depth and dimension. P.S. I totally do this on furniture too. small project, I'll be using Easy Peasy Spray Wax to seal in my work, but you could also use any one of Dixie Belle's top coats, any of the clear coats, or Gator Hide. If I remember correctly, in the actual movie Hocus Pocus, the little eyeball that's on the top of the book is blue, but I don't want to make mine exactly the same. This is a creative process. I'm just mimicking a fun little look, so I'm going to actually make my eyeball a brown eyeball. I use some beautiful white cotton to accent where the white part of the eye would be, and then chocolate with a little gold, and then adding, of course, my little black pupil in the middle. Add a little bit of Moonshine Metallics to accent the stitches and then I did find some old gilding wax in sort of a coppery red color. Um, it's been discontinued by Dixie Belle but it's a red wax that I added to kind of accent the raised detail on this piece. Since this book is actually just like a decor item for Halloween, I thought it might be fun to raise it up a little bit and give it some feet. So these are actually just plain old wood knobs that you would use on a dresser or an end table. I'm going to gild them in bronze. This is gold, actually not gold, bronze gilding wax. And since it's oil based, you can leave it to dry and it will harden up on its own. I then am going to come in and glue them to the bottom part of this little book to create a raised pedestal design. If you hadn't had the opportunity to check out all of the gilding wax from Dixie Belle, I think that you would really like it. I use gilding wax on a lot of things. I often use it for hardware to completely change the color from maybe a burnished gold to a bright gold, or take things even darker and add that beautiful black gilding wax to change the hardware look completely. 
As you can see, I really didn't finish off the bottom of the book very well because you're not gonna see it. It's gonna be sitting down and that will be on the bottom. So I'm going to just glue these little feet and attach them to the base and this will raise up my book. Getting really close to being done this cute little decor item. I did come in with gloss from the um, clear coat line at Dixie Bell and gloss on the eyeball, only the eyeball, so that it would be a little bit shiny. A couple of more small details. I'm going to add a vintage keyhole to the side of the book. It actually is supposed to be shiny side up, but I prefer it with the dirty side up. It, it fits the book vibe just a little bit better. So I'm going to actually nail it in because it's going over top of the wood you bend molding and that wood you molding wood you bend molding is actually wood. So you can do anything to wood you bend moldings that you do to wood, drill them, stain them, paint them, put nails in them. It all works the same as a real wood product. The only nails that I had were silver, so that's obviously not a good match for this little brass keyhole. So I'm going to come in with some paint and actually just touch those little nails with paint, and then this way they're going to be disguised just a little bit, and it's just going to add to the age factor on this piece. I then use my Easy Peasy Spray Wax, which is a water-based spray wax, to seal in all of my work. This goes down wet, you can buff it back, you can let it set in and dry. I covered the eyeball because I do want that shiny with the gloss clear coat. But after that spray wax has dried, my little decor book is pretty much done. Sometimes these ideas are just living in my head and I have to get them out on something. And we all know that if I were to put this look on a piece of furniture, people would lose their ever-loving minds. So a decor book it was. I finished it, I kind of did it in my spare time, and I absolutely love this little thing. Plus, this is a really great way of using up your tiny little scraps of any little bit of your furniture painting journey that you save. Those knobs, the tiny little bit of wood you bend, the keyhole, it's all in good fun. So even though this week was not a furniture paint makeover, it's a furniture paint book. I think that this little guy will sit on my front porch. I can put candy in it and it will be perfect for trick-or-treaters. Thanks for hanging out with me and this little painting journey. I hope you had fun and you take some time out of your busy day to create something just a little bit more on the wild side because I know that this is the best way to use up my scraps, use up my creative energy and have a little bit of fun. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and follow along on my painting journey.